Hello, we're going to PC Jack. After quite a while, I'm now revisiting the Redux machine, which is my mini ITX VR system. Today, I fancy getting my hands a little dirty and trying out some overclocking to see whether we can get any sort of increase in performance with the system built as is. Now, we may be somewhat limited with the form factor of the system, but I do feel like we could push a little bit more performance. But I am interested to see just quite how far it will actually go. So for today, we'll be overclocking the CPU and the GPU to see if there's any extra performance to be creeped out of this system. If you haven't seen the original build video for the Redux machine, then I highly recommend checking it out. I'll make sure to include a link in the description. But the system features a Ryzen 5 5600X and an RTX 3060 Ti. And for today, we're going to be testing at 1080p as this will most likely utilize the CPU even more with an overclock. I'll also be giving you a rough overview of exactly how I like to overclock my components, so you'll get an idea of how I overclock both my CPU and my GPU. And maybe it'll help you with your own system too. So, let's get into it. So to start, what you should do is actually establish a baseline for your stock performance in the system. And to do that, all we're going to do is do a couple of runs in Unigen Heaven 4.0 to gauge our overall performance before we start overclocking. And we should be able to see exactly how our CPU and GPU performs at stock. Now we're going to be testing this at 1920 by 1080 as this is most likely to tax our CPU a little bit more than it would at higher resolutions. And as you can see so far, we're hitting around 4.6 gigahertz on average on our CPU, which is going to be on mostly single core, but there. But we should be able to push an all core overclock much higher than that. And if our GPU, we're averaging just under 1900 megahertz and pulling just under 200 watts, which is pretty good so far, but we should definitely be able to push that a little higher. And with both our temperatures, we're looking like we've got a decent bit of thermal headroom for both the CPU and the GPU. So I'll run through the benchmarks and get some results that we can use to compare and then we'll get to tweaking some settings. Okay, so we've been through our benchmark run in Unigen Heaven 4.0 and as you can see, we've got our FPS score of 140.9 and then for our score is 3549. So, all we're going to do now is we're going to start off with overclocking our GPU and seeing if we can push that up a little further. So for my GPU overclocking, I quite like to use MSI Afterburner. There are other programs you can use, but this is the one I'm most comfortable with using. So if you want a basic gist of how you actually do an overclock, generally how I would like to start out is by maxing out our power limit, just in order to make sure we can draw as much power as we need to maintain our overclock, which I can start off by doing like this. See there, so now we've increased our power limit to 110%, which also increases our temperature limit up to 90C, which I highly doubt we'll get up to. This is just to ensure we don't thermal throttle. So, with our power limit increased, the next thing I would move on to is our core clock. And this is where it can take a little bit more time because you should do this gradually. But all you would do is you would gradually increase this amount by maybe 10 MHz at a time, test in whatever synthetic benchmark you're using to ensure stability, and then keep doing that until you start the crash. And then you can back it back down and you know where your sweet spot is for the overclock. So, in order to do that, you can drag this slider, like so, or you can just type in the uh, amount you want to put in, so we can go, see, so that's plus 10 megahertz, and we could just apply this just to see if it's worked, there we go, and then our core clock has gone up ever so slightly, it's only 10 megahertz, so it's not going to be a drastic difference, but you generally do that until you actually manage to find a stable setting that works for your system, and same goes for the memory clock, you have to gradually increase this until you reach instability, so I'm going to have a little mess around and see what works best for this overclock, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've dialed in my overclock. I haven't had to increase our core voltage for this. I've just gone with whatever we can manage within our current power limit. And as you can see, I managed to go for plus 175 on the core clock. And that is showing as stable at the moment. And it's pushing us well above 2000 megahertz, which is pretty good. And for our memory clock, we've managed to push plus 1000 megahertz. So all I'm going to do now is just ensure this is stable through the benchmark. And we'll see if there's any increase to our test results. Okay, so we've been for our GPU OC only benchmark, and as you can see, there's been a nice little boost to our performance. We've gone up from 140.9 FPS to 151.8, so roughly around 10 FPS increase, which is pretty good so far. And as you can see, our score went from 3549 all the way up to 3824. So overall, we can see a nice little increase to our performance with just overclocking our GPU. So for our CPU, we'll test it individually in a CPU intensive benchmark and then we'll start doing some gaming with it and see whether it has increased our performance. Okay, so we're now in Cinebench R20, which we are going to use for testing just our CPU. 
And for this, I've gone through both the multi-core and single-core testing just to see what our results are prior to doing any sort of overclocks and just to see what sort of performance we're getting our CPU at stock. So as you can see, we're getting 4486 for our multi-core test and then for a single core, we're getting 598. So pretty good so far. There is one slight problem that I think we're getting a little toasty with the CPU cooler, which I think I've managed to uh, set it to default on this fan speed. So it may be that reason. So I might bump up the fan speeds later on. But we got up to 84.6C at max, so it was a little toastier than I would like to be for doing the testing. So I'll increase the fan speed a little bit when we tweak our CPU settings, just to keep those temperatures nice and steady. And then for that, we're actually pulling about 125 watts, so we may pull something similar when we do our overclock. But basically, we're going to pop into our BIOS, and we're going to tweak some settings for our CPU this time. And then we'll jump back into Cinebench R20 and ensure we're stable. And then once we know that we can use the overclock for the CPU, we'll use it with the GPU overclock, in heaven and see if that's stable and then we'll see how we get on in some games okay so we're now in the bios for our system and the things that we're going to be looking to change for our cpu is going to be our core ratio our voltages and we're going to look at our load line calibration so basically all you would do the same way that you would do for a gpu overclock is that you'll gradually increase the core ratio and the voltage until you reach instability and then back it off a bit to find what's most suitable for your system every cpu is going to be different so even though my 5600x might hit a different result to yours it's just going to vary from CPU to CPU. So all I would start doing is that I would say for a 5600X, it's pretty easy to hit 4.6 gigahertz first on about 1.3 volts. But for me, I'm going to use a setting that I know works for myself. And we're going to go for 47 for our core ratio, which will overclock our CPU to 4.7 gigahertz. Now I have pushed 4.8 in the past, but I did reach some instability. So for now, just so we're a bit more stable, we're going to stick to 4.7 but that still should give us a little bit of a boost. So in order to drive that new core ratio, we are gonna to have to increase our voltage. So for our voltage, you can see here, we're currently at auto for our voltage. So we have to change that to manual. And then for our voltage, I found that I can do, I can do about 1.3, but just to ensure stability, we're gonna go for 1.325, which I know for this speed should keep it stable enough. Now, one thing that is also important when you're looking at CPU overclocking is that you need to ensure that you've got a decent load line calibration setting enabled. And for me, I like to go for LLC level 3. Now, I'm not an overclocking expert, but to give you a rough idea of what load line calibration does, is that when your system is idling, you may see that the voltages are pretty high because there's not actually any significant load on the system. But then once you put a CPU intensive load on the system, you'll notice that your voltages will drop down accordingly to match the clock speed that you've set. But the thing that you'll find is that the voltage doesn't actually quite match what you set exactly. And basically, all that does is creates what's referred to as V-droop, where the voltage drops significantly, and it can make it a little bit more tricky to keep the actual voltage that you set in the BIOS. What low-line calibration does is ensures that this V-droop is less significant, and it allows you to better match the voltage that you've set. Bit of a rough explanation of what LLC does, but if you're looking for a more detailed one, I'd recommend checking out Bill Zoid's uh, guide on exactly what LLC is. So I'll make sure there's a link for that in the video. So for our settings, we have a core ratio of 47 to get 4.7 gigahertz and a voltage of 1.325 volts and LLC level 3. We should be ready to test this and make sure we're stable in Cinebench R20. Okay, so we're back in the desktop and we haven't had any problems with getting into the desktop with our overclock enabled. And as you can see, we're showing 4.7 gigahertz on all six cores for our 5600X. So all we're gonna do now is go back through Cinebench R20 and ensure that we are stable with these settings. And then we'll get back to Heaven 4.0 and see how much of an improvement we get with both the GPU and the CPU overclocked. Okay, so we've been back through Cinebench R20 with our 4.7 GHz overclock on 5600X, and we've seen a decent little boost of performance as we've now gone up to 4665 points on multi-core and 607 points on single core. So we have seen a bit of an improvement and it does seem to be stable. And in terms of our temperatures, we've only hit 78.3C max, which is not too bad. Like I said, I did change some of the fan speeds for the fans just to make sure that we're uh, not struggling with the increase in temperatures. But we actually managed to pull about 114 watts with our overclock, which is about 10 watts less than we were at stock. So overall, we've actually been a bit more energy efficient, which is pretty cool. But like I said, we're going to have to see if this is stable in heaven benchmark with the GPU overclock as well. And then we'll see if there has been a boost to gaming performance and test it out in some actual titles. Okay, so we've been back through heaven benchmark again. And as we see with both a GPU and CPU overclock, there's not really a drastic difference with that boost on the CPU as we've gone from 
FPS with just a GPU overclock to 152.6 with the CPU overclocked as well. And that's not really a massive improvement, that's about less than one FPS, but the score went from 3824 up to 3844. So like I said, Unigen Heaven 4.0 isn't gonna fully utilize the CPU anyway at this rate, but at least we can see that we're currently stable with the two running at the same time. So I think the best thing to do now would be to run through some actual games and see if there's any improvements in those and see if the results vary from game to game. So, after ensuring that our overclocks were stable in both Cinebench R20 and Unigen Heaven 4.0, I then decided to actually test this in a couple of my favourite games. And the results were... fairly lacklustre. Starting out with Doom Eternal, we only saw an increase of 4 FPS to our average FPS across the board, and our 1% lows represent a fairly significant increase as well. But overall, nothing really to shout home about. Even though we're still running at 1080p, it does seem that Doom Eternal is still much more graphically bound, so increasing the resolution may have seen a greater yield for our GPU overclock. Moving on to CSGO, we see a bit more of an improvement where we've gone from 344 FPS to 354 on our average FPS, which again is not great, but that's still a bit of a better improvement over Doom Eternal. And finally, for Horizon Zero Dawn, which is actually fairly CPU intensive, we did see a fairly significant increase to our FPS with 113 up to 120 FPS. And that's probably one of the more noticeable increases in performance across the three titles I've tested today. So overall, if I'm being totally honest, I'm not really that impressed with the results from today's overclocking. I believe the reason we're seeing such a poor increase is for a few reasons. One of which being that we're running at 1080p, which isn't going to tax the GPU as much and make the most of the overclock we've enabled for it. Secondly, for our CPU, Ryzen CPUs come so well binned out of the box that they'll boost really well across single-threaded applications. And even though we were beating our scores in Cinebench R20, it really didn't help us that much when it came to gaming. So overall, am I really going to bother with overclocking my CPU or my GPU on a daily basis? Well, to be perfectly honest, what I reckon I would do is instead I wouldn't actually overclock my CPU for daily use and instead I would overclock the GPU because as we saw there wasn't much of a sacrifice when it came to power efficiency or temperatures. So I'd be happy to run the GPU overclock which actually would be a bit more beneficial for my needs as the main use for this system is actually for VR so overclocking the GPU would definitely help a lot more. For our CPU though I don't feel much need to actually overclock it as it comes so well bent out of the box and there's not much need to actually tune it any further. Admittedly, I do like to tinker and it's always a bit fun to do some overclocking and sometimes the synthetic benchmarks can be a bit more deceptive than it would be for an actual game. So it's worth testing it in the applications you would use to see if either overclock would suit yourself. But hopefully from my testing today, this should give you a rough idea if you're running a similar configuration and also how to achieve the overclocks that I did. And I must say, after many months of wanting to do more videos on the Redux machine, I feel like we've reached a close with this system, and I probably won't do any more follow-ups on this for now. And it'll just remain as my dedicated VR system, and also for watching Netflix and Disney+. Plus. But mainly for VR gaming, that's what it is. So, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. If you didn't enjoy the video, then please feel free to leave a dislike. If you have more PC Jack content though, then make sure to check out my Twitch where I live stream every Monday and Thursday. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself, another like-minded hardware enthusiast, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while helping to fund everything I do on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.